I would like to welcome you here in the second transnational webinar of Helicon Project. My name is Magdalena Klimek and I work as a project coordinator for AUVIT, Education and Innovation, which is an organization located in Ostrava in Czech Republic. First of all, before I start, I would really like to thank you, Ruth and Matthias, for, all your, all, for helping me with all of the technical things and to run this, uh, to run this uh, webinar, and also for preparing the first transnational webinar, which took place last week. Also, uh, I would really like to apologize for my voice today, because I'm a little bit sick, and, but I really hope that you can hear me well. So, but if not, please uh, write me if you can't hear me well. Uh, and I'm so sorry <laughs> for any possible breaks. Um, okay, so as we probably all know, um, the Elicon project, supported by Erasmus+, Plus, aims to explore the rich cultural diversity of Europe and raise awareness about its high value for our common European life. Increasing the awareness of this precious cultural diversity contributes to the development of a shared identity. That is why those webinars are a great opportunity to, to reach a wider audience and share the important elements from the cultures of each partner, especially the audience which is not able to participate in the project meetings or our exhibitions. Uh, we as Alvit Innovation and Education, we believe that European cooperation, including mobility, exchanges and mutual learning, has strong uh, benefits to in individuals and European community, contributing of building of a common European identity. That is why today I would like to present you some elements of the cultural heritage in the Moravian Silesian region of Czech Republic. Uh, and uh, all of them, which uh, are going to be presented here now, are the ones we have shown in our pictures at the exhibition in Spain, in UK and in Czech Republic until now. So, what will you listen about today? Uh, I'm going to tell you about Ostrava, the third largest city in Czech Republic, industrial heritage of Ostrava, Slavic carnival and Czech feasts, example of rural crafts located in Wallachian Open Air Museum, Czech Cottage House, the one of the oldest uh, located in Beskide Mountains, and uh, last but not least, a small town located in Moravian Silesian region called Stramberg. And please feel free to ask me every question you may have, because I would really like to explain you as much as I can. But I would like to answer these questions, not right away. Uh, if you don't mind, let me present all of the content in each section. The numbers of sections uh, are written on the top of the left side or ev of every slide. And during presenting, please write these questions you may have. And I will answer all of these questions after finishing the section. I hope it's fine for you and because it, this way it will be much easier for me. Okay, so uh, this slide presents a very simple map of Czech Republic uh, with its capital city, Prague. Uh, the Moravian Silesian region, which is marked by the yellow color, uh, it's one of the 14 administrative regions of the Czech Republic. Before May 2001, it was called the Ostrava region, and this region is loca located in the northeastern part of um, its historical region of Moravia and in most of the Czech part of the historical region of Silesia. It also uh, borders two other, country, two other countries, Poland to the north and Slovakia to the east. As you can see, there are four places marked on this map. Ostrava, Szwarna Hanka, so the cottage house in the mountains, a small town called Strampek, and Wallachian Open Air Museum. I am showing this map 
because this is uh, because this way I want you to have a better orientation about the localization of places I'm going to tell you about. Okay, so shall we begin the whole presentation? And please, uh, can you also write me if you can, if you hear me well, because I really hope everything is fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. I can see that uh, you can uh, hear me well. That's perfect. Okay, uh, what can I say more about the <coughs> Moravian Silesian region? It is a highly industrialized region with its capital in Ostrava. Uh, and Ostrava used to be called the steel heart of Republic. Uh, it has several uh, mountainous areas where the landscape is relatively uh, preserved. Nowadays, the economy of the region benefits from its local, uh, loca from its location uh, in the Czech, Polish or Slovak borderlands. And traditionally, the region has uh, six, six districts. Although uh, most um, administration has been shifted to the municipalities, uh, which extended competences and the municipalities um, with the Commission and local authority. Until the year of 2000, uh, the current region did not exist as such, but was only a part of a larger administrative unit called the North Moravian region. Uh, in 2000, six uh, of uh, its districts were, districts were put into the new established Moravian Silesian region. There are three towns with protected historical, historical uh, centers. Przybosz, uh, the birthplace of Sigmund Freud. Uh, then Nowy Ytin, founded uh, under the castle of Stary Ytin and also Zerotinsky Castle and Stramberg, which I'm going to say more a little bit later. Okay, now I would like to say uh, a little bit more about Ostrava. So let's say the capital of uh, this region. And uh, Ostrava um, is a city which is located in the valley between Beskidi Mountains and uh, the Yesenik Mountains, and known also uh, as the Moravian Gate. Um, Uh, Ostrava has a very strate strategic location because it's located 10 kilometers south of the border with Poland and 50 kilometers west of the border with Slovakia. Uh, it's a little bit... Um, it's located, it is located also 360 kilometers from the capital city of Czech Republic, so Prague, and 170 kilometers from the second largest uh, city in Czech Republic, so, so Brno. Uh, from Ostrava, it's also very, Ostrava is also very close to the city, Polish city called Katowice. Uh, and I could say that it's also close because uh, 300 kilometers from uh, Vienna in Austria. In Ostrava, you can find the river, uh, some rivers as Otra, Ostravice, Opava and Lutina. Uh, nowadays, Ostrava offers a variety of cultural and social activities, 
The local theatre is one of the best scenes in the country. Uh, the Gallery of Fine Arts and the Gallery of Plato are respected institutions. Uh, also exhibitions and music clubs, uh, hosting both very well-known and less known musicians and bands of different genres. Uh, also, in Ostrava is the place where many uh, festivals, sport events or tour tourist events take place. So it's very active and uh, modern city. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, I would like to ask you if you have any questions about Ostrava or about the region. Um, okay, I can see that there are no questions, so maybe let's go to the second section. So now I would like to say a little bit more about the um, industrial area of Ostrava. So first of all, I would like to say more about the area called Tolni Witkowice which in English can be translated as Lower Witkowice. And this is a very unique area where between 1828 and 1998 coal was mined and uh, raw iron was produced. And the person who was responsible for this was the Olmutz Archbishop Rudolf. Today, this place is a national element of industrial heritage. Uh, it includes an uh, industrial area of Witkowice uh, with a unique collection of industrial architecture. Uh, this area is registered in the list of European cultural heritage and was also placed on the Czech Republic list uh, of UNESCO World Heritage Sites in 2001 under the name The Industrial Complexes at Ostrava. Um, after termination of iron production uh, was discussed what to do with the former industrial complex at, at first um, the authorities wanted to destroy it, but it was uh, they decided that it, it would be rebuilt as a technical monument for future generations. In June 2002, the government declared Dolny Witkowice area as a nation, national site. In December 2008, um, and then it, be, uh, it become a, a European cultural heritage element. Uh, 
uh, now, nowadays, Dorni Witkowice has changed into an, a unique educational, social and cultural center uh, of great importance. Every day it serves the local residents, young and old, as well as the tourists from all around the world. Uh, many attractions. Um, and, for example, concerts, professional conferences and international congresses take place there. Children and their parents can play in the small center of science and technology U6, the big uh, center of science and technology, which is also located in the area, presents science and technology in the form of an entertaining game. And cultural quarter, Lubina, attracts not only musicians and bands, but also sculptors, graphic designers, visual artists, and lovers of concerts and other cultural events. Also, Dolny Witkowice is a place where every year one of the most important events takes place, the music festival Colors of Ostrava. Yes, Matthias, exactly. It's also an excellent pl place to take pictures. Yeah, I can agree with you. <laughs> Uh, another element of the industrial area of uh, Ostrava is uh, Michal Mine. And uh, Michal Mine is really important uh, to us because our exhibition of Elicon projects took place there. And. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the Michal Mine, it's also named by its Czech name, uh, Dul Michal. Uh, it's a museum today, it's a museum of mining lo located uh, in the pit bank of a former coal mine. Um, if I want to say a little bit more about its history, so it was sunk in 1843 and then it was uh, remodeled in 1910 uh, to accommodate the change caused by the electricity, compressors and the converters. Um, the mine was closed in 1993. Um, today, the museum is a point on the European Road of Industrial Heritage and the buildings have been preserved as they looked at the turn of the 20th century. The area was declared a national cultural landmark in 1995. And the museum displays the above ground areas that a miner would have been familiar with, including the dressing rooms, washrooms, registry, dispatching, and most importantly, the machine room with its original and unique equipment that had worked from uh, 1912 until 1993. Uh, yes, I can see, uh, Matthias, that you are asking if uh, there are still active coal mines in Ostrava. Uh, I'm not sure about it, <laughs> to be honest. Maybe it's a, it's a question more to Martin. Mm. But I would like to uh, ask, because as I said, our exhibition took place there. So I would like to ask if anyone who participated in our exhibition uh, would like to comment or say something about this place?
Yes, thank you, Matthias. Uh, I also think it was a very nice place for our exhibition um, because it's an element of the cultural heritage of Ostrava. So if our project is about cultural heritage, it was a, a wonderful place. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we would like to thank you uh, for coming to our exhibition. <laughs> Matthias, thank you. So um, maybe I would like to say that um, for the exhibition it was a wonderful place uh, because, of it, because of its atmosphere. The atmosphere of this place was wonderful uh, and very unique. Yes, so as Martin uh, just wrote, the feedback was positive and from the Michal Mine and also the town hall officers, they were very interested and they are waiting for the next steps. Um, I can also say that um, because uh, I said about um, the Donnywood Covid area and also about the Michal mine and the next uh, mine was Landek Park. Okay, so if there are no, there are no other uh, questions about, uh, about industrial uh, heritage, we can go forward. Uh, now I'm going to say a little bit about the Slavic Carnival. And the Slavic Carnival, court in Czech language, uh, mass opposed. Um, this is the uh, most um, popular name, or also Ostatki lub 
uh, or uh, Sibzinki. It's a traditional festival which takes place in Czech Republic. Uh, also, um, the Slavic Carnival takes place in Poland, Slovakia, Slovenia, Serbia, Croatia, Bulgaria and Russia. And uh, this carnival uh, used to be in the past, the period from the 12th night, night uh, until our Ash Wednesday. Uh, a little period begins on Ash Wednesday before Eastern. A uh, fancy dress uh, fun, which is held as a rule on the Lenten Tuesday, is a culmination of Massa Post. Uh, Masopust, and especially the few last days of this period, was an official holiday uh, of feasting for people in the past. Uh, during these days, people were supposed to eat uh, a, a huge dinner, and then a huge dinner parties were held. Uh, then, the 40 days long Lent followed, and mostly uh, people eat lentils, baked potatoes, eggs, cheese, and a boiled semolina. Um, in nowadays, um, during the carnival days, Czech people can celebrate it on the streets of villages, towns and cities by dressing up and joining plenty of the carnival events. The popular elements of the carnival are, are folk customs, folk music and a multitude of food and drinks. And nevertheless, the most important part of this event is a ceremonial procession of people wearing masks and going through the city to the rhythm of the music. Uh, also, sometimes uh, during the party, during the carnival, uh, other ceremonial dances are performed. Um, in many other uh, places, um, also there are other customs. Uh, sometimes it's only the presentation of masks uh, without dancing. Uh, yes, Matthias, I can see your question. Uh, first of all, thank you for your comment. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know the carnival in Cologne, in Germany. Um, and I can see that you are asking if there are witches uh, as a carnival mask. I remember you asked us last week about it, about um, the witch's mask, and I don't know, and I can also see, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not sure, and I can also see that uh, Martin uh, is saying no, that they are not.
uh, here you can see some pictures from this carnival period and um, I would like to also say um, more about uh, another event and uh, this event is called Carolina Oktoberfest and uh, I'm saying about it because it was an event that we offered uh, during our meeting, our project meeting. Uh, so I hope someone who participated in this, uh, who participated in this event, can uh, comment somehow. But in general, it's an open air festival organized by Forum Nova Carolina in Ostrava. Uh, this is a complex um, um, in the city center of Ostrava. And this festival, in general, it's a great opportunity to taste the various kinds of beer and food from the Moravian Slesian region, Czech Republic. And usually an additional attractions, attraction is a concert played by Czech and Slovak music bands. So um, maybe Spanish or German team or UK team can say something. Uh, I'm sorry, not the Spanish team, <laughs> UK and, uh, and German team. Okay, thank you, Matthias, for your comment. Yes, this is probably true, <laughs> but I really hope that you liked uh, that you liked the, the event there. <laughs> yes, as a Polish person, <laughs> I can say that yes, we also like beer, but probably not as much as people from Czech Republic and from Germany. <laughs> um, okay, so maybe we can, um, now I can say uh, a, a, something about rural crafts. And I would like to say about Wallachian Open Air Museum which is the second uh, oldest and largest open air museum in Czech Republic. It is located in Rožnov uh, pod Radhoštem, in the region called uh, Moravian Wallachia. And it presents the historical culture and traditions of uh, this region.
and the museum is devoted to uh, preserving and displaying Wallachian uh, culture and traditions. Mm. The museum was established by the Jaronek Kaders, who came from a working class family of craftsmen and makers. Mm, between 1911 and 1925, the brothers have been developing the concept of opening an air open museum in Rozhnov and uh, make it, it as a reality. Mm, in 1925, du during a folklore festival called Wallachian Year, the museum was opened. Mm, the unique attribute of this museum are the expositions uh, preparing based on uh, real stories of individuals or whole families living there and working in the past. Uh, the whole museum um, has three parts. The first one is Little Wooden Town and the very important element of this part uh, is the architecture. Today the museum presents uh, original buildings which were built at the end of 19th century and at the beginning of uh, 20th century. And from the original place the museum relocated the wooden town hall and traditional state houses and reconstructed together with uh, their interiors. Afterwards, step by step, uh, the next buildings were added, including uh, Vasek's pub, the major's house, uh, and also the church. The second part of the museum is Valachian village, and this is the largest part in the whole museum. And this part consists of a farmsteads, wells, gardens, bell towers, windmills, and there are places among the roads, trees, and other like, landscape elements. Um, the Valachian village was built to secure the original monuments against their destruction uh, if they were left in the original uh, environment. <clears throat> the place shows the reconstruction and representation of original life in the village which had to follow the rhythm of the seasons and nature. And the last part of the museum is Water Mill Valley. And this is the newest part. And it is focused on the people living and working there and presenting the whole work and technical skills of the workers, making everyday life in the village possible. And uh, what kind of rural crafts elements we presented on our pictures? So we presented the beehives, wells, brick production, um, carding machine, food store, spinning wheel, wool spinning machine, uh, kitchen tools, and wood crafts. Are there any questions? Mm, so the museum is, um, I think, around 60 kilometers. Yeah, 40 minutes. Mm -hmm.
Mm, okay. Uh, now I would like to uh, say a little bit about the cottage house called Schwarnahanka. And this is the cottage house built in the 19th century. And it is the oldest cottage house located in this beautiful uh, area of Moravian Slaves and uh, Beskidi Mountains. Mm. Let me say a few words about the history of this place. The building was built around the 19th century, in the middle. Uh, after 1815, the owner of this place uh, became Anna Velichkova, who had come uh, there from, uh, from Slovakia, today Slovakia. Uh, she changed the place um, and started selling beer, bacon, brinza and probably liquor. However, after some time, um, she uh, also bought a farm from her neighbor and she opened a pub. Mm, the place was called U Hanki because Anna was called by, lo uh, was called by locals by uh, Hanna Vel Hanka Velitkova. Uh, the place was very famous, um, and there was a legend. There was a legend uh, that two neighbors uh, were about to fight about this place, and the whole case ended in the court. In uh, then um, Anna decided to to sell the farm. In 1904, the cottage Hanka burned down, uh, burned down, and the owner built. A new pub with a cozy place. Mm, and during the First World War, the cottage played an important role in the history of this area by providing the shelter for the famous Beskidi poet Ted Bezrud. Mm, nowadays, Schwarnahanka is managed by few enthusiasts who want the place to have a great atmosphere and to be family friendly. And one of the greatest attraction provided uh, by Farna Hanka is watching the night sky. Because of this great location, the observations are organized regularly in the presence of astronomers. Mm, any questions? Mm, okay, and the last thing I would like to um, I would like to um, tell you about today. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, there are some important and well-known towns in Moravian Silesian region. And as an example, I would like to present the city of Strambeck. Uh, and Strambeck is a small town in this region. And the history of Stromberg started in 1359 uh, when the city was established by the son of John of Bohemia. Uh, the very unique attribute of this town are numerous histor uh, historical buildings, including a collection of wooden houses from the 18th and 19th century, and also the Truba Castle Tower. Uh, with a height of 40 meters. Uh, uh, this town uh, also has a nickname, 
as a Moravian Bethlehem. Are there any questions? Yes, Matthias, thank you very much for this comment. Uh, I also hope that it will uh, become a UNESCO um, element. Um, so I would really like to thank you for being here. And maybe I will give the voice to Ruth and Matthias now. Thank you very much, Magdalena. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, it was very nice uh, to hear this PowerPoint and to hear several aspects about the Czech uh, Lisp tradition. Um, and, uh, so uh, probably we will see also some more uh, photos or new photos in the next uh, exhibition in, uh, in April uh, in Rastatt. But um, before we will hear uh, the next uh, webinar. Mm -hmm. Um, on 23rd of January is the next webinar from the British team and on 13th of February 2020 is the next webinar from our Spanish team. Oh, you don't have to hear from you. Okay. Um.
Wenn die es nicht ausgeben, weiß ich nicht. Ähm so, ja, yeah, now. Now you hear us a little bit better, I think. Uh, is it uh, better now? Yes. yes, okay. Okay. Yeah. So it was just a, a little bit uh, tricky with the micro, sorry. Um, once more, on 23rd of January 2020, we will uh, hear a webinar from the British team. And on 13 of February, we will hear the webinar from our Spanish team. But for now, uh, I thank you again very much, Magdalena, for, for this interesting um, informations. And uh, I would briefly add that the galleries in Ostrava are really very interesting. We have been there, we visited a gallery. Do you uh -huh. know? Yeah. Not yet. Yes. And um, it was very interesting to see how the art developed there, also by uh, the influence of the coal miners. Okay, I'm very happy that you really like it. Um, or which it was um, the gallery where the Sculpture, the figure is in front of the museum with the with the big uh, aha worm. Ah, yeah, 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 you see it. Yes, yes, it was very mm. interesting uh, because the paintings uh, show how um, mm -hmm. the industrial life was, uh, uh, how the people lived there, and uh, it was very um, impressing. Um, a very yes. impressing mm -hmm. art. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also black and white with uh, coal paintings and uh, um, yeah, it was really mm -hmm. very yeah. um, nice impressions. So I uh, could, both Matthias and me, we could uh, recommend it. Ah yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. Maybe she uh, could also make some paintings for the museum later. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, any more comments or uh, any questions um, concerning the Czech traditions <coughs> or the project? I see Martin is typing. <laughs> okay. okay, then uh, then we want to wish you have a nice evening, and thank you very much for coming. And we will also we have recorded uh, this webinar also, and uh, we will give you the link as soon as possible. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah. Bye thank bye. You. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.